Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's debrief. Today, we're going to go over the five important lessons that you learned about security from kindergarten. That's right. Who would have ever thought everything that you needed to know about being a great security guard, you were already taught in kindergarten. That's right. One of the first avenues of instruction outside of your family unit is kindergarten and you've already learned the five things that you need to be successful stay tuned for today's debrief all right guys i want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's debrief i had to throw on a hat because i'm sitting in my car and the sun is shining even though i have these really cool uh tinted windows the sun was right in my eyes and i had to put my hat on and also if i'm being 100 percent honest feeling a little self-conscious about my hair right now. I need a haircut. I can't decide. I want to grow it out and I want to like put some locks in it and kind of twist it up like Killmonger. But at the same time, like I'm right in that middle phase of growing your hair out. And if anybody knows, if you've ever tried to grow your hair out, that middle phase is the hardest phase to stick with it, right? So I'm like trying so hard to not cut it because I'm so close. If I can just hang on for like two more months, it'll be long enough for me to like twist it or braid it or do something cool with it. So pray for your boy. All right, so let's get into it. The five, um, the five principles, that's what we're gonna call this, the five principles of being a security guard that you learn in kindergarten. Number one is, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Guys, look, if you're like me and you're working directly with just, I mean, let's keep it real. Let's be honest here. If you're working with the absolute bottom of the barrel of society here in Portland, we're talking about your drug addicted, your truly, when I say mental illness, we're not talking about people that are depressed or people that are going through something. Guys, we're all dealing with those kind of things, right? If you're like me, you have mild depression. You probably have functioning depression. You're all dealing with things as men. But what I'm talking about is in the street, screaming, completely naked, kind of crazy. You know what, actually? Here's a video from today of someone that took a shit in the water fountain outside the bathroom. Granted, they were directly across from the bathroom. Look at this. The thing is, that's huge. Oh, that's, that's all, that's, that's what happens with everyone. These are the kind of people that I deal with on a daily basis, guys. These are the kind of people that I'm talking about, all right? So I get it, it's hard. It's hard to not um, allow yourself to get wrapped up and taken into the situations that you're dealing with. And it's hard when someone is calling you names or, or being disrespectful or challenging you. Guys, every single day, someone tries to fight me, right? Every single day, someone calls me a nigger, not a nigga, which I don't say to either one of those. I get called a nigger on the fucking regular every single day. And as a man, as a black man, as a proud black man, it is very hard for me to not want to not want to say something back at the very least, say something back, right? But we have to be above that. We have to be above the fray. We've got to toe the line. We've got to hold the line because we are professionals. And I've said this so many times on so many other on so many other videos. If we want to be treated as professionals, if we want our careers to actually mean something, we want it to actually be appreciated for what we do. We have to carry ourselves as professionals. So we can't get upset every time that we're called out of our name. We can't make it a pissing contest where, you know, I could literally point to the person that I'm dealing with and just point out the fact that they shit in the street that they're gonna be sleeping on the street that night, that they haven't showered in months, right? There's all kinds of things that if I wanted to, I could pick them apart. But that does not make me a professional to do that. Number one, part of being a professional means to show compassion, to show empathy. And as hard as that can be, and trust me, there are times when it's very, very hard, okay? There are times when it is very, very hard 
But we have to be above that. And we have to do our job and we have to do our job with professionalism. One of the things that, if I'm being honest, one of the problems that I have with the police officers in this area is that they do not, uh, for the, I, I'm, I'm generalizing here, a lot of them do not hold themselves to a higher standard. You will see them going back and forth at the protest in a pissing contest with Antifa. You will see them going back and forth in a pissing contest, a war of words with Black Lives Matter. And both of those Failures to rise above lead to detrimental consequences down the road. And for us in security, not watching what we say and how we talk to people or how we come off to people, there's very little leeway because all it takes is for someone to make that complaint or for someone to find something that you say being offensive. And there's very little recourse that we have. So Principle number one, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And guys, as security guards, there's plenty of times where we have the option of just shutting up, right? The beauty of our job is that we have management, we have the property owner, and if we need to, we can call the police. So we don't have to have the final say. At the end of the day, the people that are paying us or the proxies of the people that are paying us, they are going to have the final say, one way or the other. Whether that's moving people off property, whether that's having someone arrested, they're going to make that decision. They're going to get what they want out of the situation. So we don't need to exasperate things by being disrespectful back to people that are disrespectful to us. Okay, principle number two, number two, kind of piggybacks off of principle number one, and that is simply mind your manners. Now, mind your manners is not necessarily focused on the, um, the people that you're dealing with. It's more for your clients. Understanding the importance of when you show up to your, your post, right? Let's just say you're working in a retail establishment. When you show up to that retail establishment, understanding who your manager is, who the director of that store is, who are your important players, your manager of the day. Um, at some of the retail places where I work, we have people called PICs, person in charge. They would be maybe that third level down from the director, right? And then aside from that, you have cashiers. You have certain cashiers in one of the retail establishments where I work. They've been there for over 30 years. Do you think that that 30 year cashier has some pull in the location where I work? You best fucking believe it. So minding your manners is having that, that attitude that all of our parents, hopefully all of our parents have instilled in us saying good morning, saying hello, talking to the people that are in charge and asking them, is there anything that we're doing differently today? Is there anything that you need? Is there anything that you're seeing that I could do better, right? Understanding the importance of yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And if you're in a place like Portland, and we've talked about this, understanding how you interact with people that are non-binary, people that identify as trans, people that identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, all of these things. Minding your manners is about carrying yourself in a respectful manner and also projecting projecting that respect onto the people that are above you in terms of their status or rank where you're working. And guys, this can go so far because so many people, so many people negate this. So many people just don't even think about this. So if you're one of the few people that's actually doing this, you're going to separate yourself from the pack and separating yourself from the pack can mean better opportunities and higher pay for you down the road. So remember, number two, mind your manners. Okay, principle number three is keep your hands to yourself. Now guys, this means two different things, right? Keep your hands to yourself, number one, is go very, very lightly on hands-on situations. I know, 
None of us want to be in a situation where we're getting pushed around. We're potentially being assaulted. Someone's trying to harm us. And we've all kind of made that moral decision that if it comes down to it, it's going to be them and not us. But guys, I can't stress this enough. You need to tread lightly when it comes to hands-on situations. Do everything that you can to never put yourself in a situation where you have to physically restrain someone, physically detain someone, or in the worst case scenario, physically harm someone. I get it, I understand this is what we do, and at times, there's just simply no other way around it. But as a security guard, not as a police officer, not having that uh, qualified immunity, not having a union behind you, not having the full weight of the justice system behind you, we are so expendable. And all it takes is for the perception to be there that what you did was not right and you will lose your job. So tread very lightly and keep your hands to yourself. Part two of that comes down to um, getting involved, shall we say, with people at work, right? This is coworkers. Uh, this is people that maybe have um, fringe association with uh, your companies and what you're doing. Just be very, very careful about starting romantic or sexual relationships while at work because I can tell you from firsthand experience, it doesn't always work out in your favor, okay? And sometimes it comes back to bite you in the ass and I'll have a video about that down the road. So number three, keep your hands to yourself. Principle number four is stay in between the lines. What do I mean to stay in between the lines? We're not talking about coloring here, but the principle is the same. Listen, no matter who you work for as a security guard, you have a certain set of post orders. Post orders are written to keep all of us out of trouble. It gives us a very limited scope of what it is that we're supposed to be doing for that company, for that business, or for that individual. And it tells the people that potentially would take us to court what our role was at that time. If you stay within the post orders, that is the closest thing that you will have as a security guard to qualified immunity. You're only doing what you were told to do. You're only doing what you were authorized to do. You were only doing what you were hired to do. Be very, very aware of what the specific request and requirements are uh, in your position as a security guard and stay within those. Do not go outside of the scope of what it is that you're there for. One of the places that I work, we are only there for customer and employee security. We are not there for loss prevention. We're not supposed to be stopping people for stealing. We're not supposed to be following people for stealing. We're not supposed to be approaching people for stealing. We're there for something very specific, customer and employee safety. That is our scope. And many of you, probably all of you that are watching this, no matter where you're working, you have post orders that are specific for what you are supposed to be doing on your job. Stay within the lines. And if you stay within the lines, you will stay employed. Okay, number five, principle number five, always raise your hand. Raise your hand in, in classrooms for a kindergarten means to ask permission. As a security guard, you are not a um, post-certified um, peace officer, right? You are a armed guard, some of you an unarmed guard. You need to be asking permission for the things that you are doing. Who are you asking permission from? Well, some things are gonna be from your supervisors. Some things are gonna be from your direct employers. Some things are gonna be from your managers. This goes back to number four of stay within the lines, right? If you ask for permission, you never have to ask for forgiveness. And guys, listen, I know that you, you enjoy the thrill of doing things. I do too. I get in the in the moment and I want to go and make that approach or I want to go and I really don't want to say certain things on camera here, right? But the great thing about asking permission is that if you are 
told to do something by your superior or your direct supervisor, you're slowly shifting that liability off of you and onto the company or the employer. And that is so important for your individual safety, your individual bank account to make sure that you're not sued down the road, right? And for your ability to remain employed and employable, okay? So again, piggybacking off of number four, which is stay within the lines. Number five, raise your hand and ask permission. Ask permission before you go and make that approach. Ask permission before you're supposed to do anything in terms of uh, moving in on someone to make uh, an arrest or a detainment or anything like that. Just ask permission of those people that are placed all around you to ensure that you're not held responsible or liable should anything go wrong. Guys, as always, I wanna thank you for joining me. Please, if you're getting any benefit to the videos that we're uploading, please like, share, and subscribe. You can always hit that button that looks just like <clears throat> this one right here. And as always, be great and watch your six, okay? Oh, one last thing. Make sure you guys are following the Facebook page. It's the Security Guard channel, just like this right here. We're gonna be starting the weight loss program next week, right? This week is all about prep. This week is all about just getting everything in order but I'm excited, I got stuff to share with you guys. Join us over at the Facebook page so that we can share our workout information, our diet information, and we can get ourselves in better shape because listen, better shape means better officers, better officers means better pay, better pay, better lifestyle, and we can all be happy, all right? Take care, be great.